Yeah, that's always been a thing with banding hummingbirds is it's people want to see you do it, but they're so small and it's just so hard to, to see. And the other thing that's notable about adult birds is that their sheen is much higher. Their feathers are a lot more glossy. A good day up here is 75 birds. Occasionally we get 100 bird days. Just wanted to update you that I had 13 birds on the C's and G's. I'm doing fine, but it's taking me a little time. No problem. Thanks, Margaret. There are many reasons to ban birds, and we're here during fall migration while we're capturing birds for uh, processing to contribute to a larger database at uh, Laurel, Maryland and there are several other organizations that we're collecting data for at this time. Each season has uh, a specific purpose. Uh, in the summer we banned breeding birds and uh, that's to get an idea of what reproduction is, recruitment into the populations, adult survival rate, there's a lot of different uh, factors that we can get from long-term information from that. But here in the fall, uh, what we're doing is fall migration banding and southwest Michigan is a stopover area uh, for many songbirds and uh, shorebirds as well. Uh, the entire shores of the, all the Great Lakes are stopover habitat but um, we have a lot of food sources and shelter here so the young birds uh, migrating down from Canada will stop here for quite long periods of time and uh, give us a chance to capture them over several days and see if they're getting fatter, gaining weight, and you know, kind of assess their health. First we recognize, uh, determine what the species is, um, which most of the birds that we handle, we handle uh, often, so we know that once in a while we get something we haven't had before and we have to actually look and verify and make sure that we have the correct identification. That's a fun day when that happens actually. But then we put the uh, proper band on them. The bands are sized to fit the legs properly. We have a, a large variety of band sizes. And then we measure the wing and uh, we examine the bird for fat, which is simply a matter of blowing the feathers on the uh, breast and the abdomen to look through the skin, which is somewhat translucent. Then we age the bird and in some cases by plumage uh, we can tell what sex they are, then we weigh them, and then we release them. And then as I say we go around and, and uh, about every 40 minutes and pick them out and bring them back here. A little bumpy through here. Go slower when it's filled with water. But... I've operated the site near Vicksburg since 1990. This site's been operated consistently pretty similar to what we're doing right now since 1974. Under the left, we'll go back to the right. Well, we're using is our mist nets. They were originally developed by the Japanese as a means for gathering food, but uh, for many years now they've been used in um, bird studies. Uh, in fact, I think catch, capturing birds for food in most parts, many parts of the world has been banned, certainly in the United States. But uh, these are called passive nets, so we put them up in areas or known, that we know that the birds are present in, and then just whatever flies into those nets. Um, they have five strings, which creates four pockets of net. The net looks a great deal like the uh, nets that you might wear in a uh, restaurant, hair nets. Um, but the birds will fall down into the pocket created between these strings and get a little bit tangled and stay in there. Um, if it's a small enough bird, larger birds don't tend to get caught. 
which is a lot of what you do. Uh, training is basically an apprenticeship. You have to come and uh, learn bird codes and things first, and then we take people out and uh, around to the nets with us, and eventually we, we do let them start learning extraction. We have three people on staff uh, with 20 to 30 years banding experience, so very experienced professional banders, and then we hire six people each fall that come and help us, and we ask them to have extracted at least a thousand birds uh, before we hire them so that they're not learning the extraction process while we're doing that, because getting the birds out of the net safely and back into our uh, banding shack is our prime goal. Once we once we have them in there and in the bags, then, you know, that gives us more time to process them and do things, we, we, but we do need to get them out of the nets as quickly as we can. Not a profession you never make a living at, but it is a skill that's useful in some banding or some uh, professors' labs and things. They want to capture birds for various reasons, so having these skills can be uh, of use. Got some. I came into this a little different than most people do. I uh, actually had a motorcycle accident and was walking for therapy and saw a large bird in the back of my property and had no idea what it was and went to the library because it was that long ago and uh, found out that it was a pileated woodpecker and uh, did not know that they had not been seen in Kalamazoo County for over 40 years at the time I saw this bird so I didn't tell anyone about it but I thought, gee, I wonder what else is out there that I'm unaware of. So I just uh, developed a passion for finding new things and seeing new things and then when I heard about banding and the chance to be this close to the birds I decided that, that was something I would enjoy doing and came and worked for a couple of years as a volunteer and then became the director here uh, in 1990. These are what I particularly love there's a large variety of them. We get about 25 maybe a little more than that different species of warblers each fall. I call this an eyeliner warbler got a black streak through his face. Some places you be and they actually, they do a lot of the aging. In the spring, it's hard to age birds by their skull. You do it by their plumage. Um, and this is a pretty good cool bird. This is a young bird, Hatcher bird. Uh, we can tell that by her eye color. It's very brown. Adult bird would be more red. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My mind, my eyes touch him. You can ask, you can ask one finger on the back. Well, I like to think that a lot of people have a similar reaction to what I did was kind of a sense of awe to see something that they may have been observing in their backyard or, or casually in other places previously but then to actually come up and be able to see the detail and, and find out that these birds have colors on them that we don't even have names for, um, just how beautiful they are when you get up close to them. And I, I think a, a sense of awe uh, is a pretty good description. When we do the hummingbird banding, we will sometimes allow a, a child to put their hand out flat and uh, we set the hummingbird in their hand and then it flies away and that look in that kid's eyes I think is a lot like I feel and I think a lot of people feel. <laughs> 